welcome to the Toffee Blue, it's your source for all things Everton and welcome to the extra time segment for Everton 2, Liverpool 2. We're going to be looking back on a very hotly contested Merseyside derby, full of controversy, full of talking points. Got Owen and Terry with me, which is always good when it's going over so many talking points, loads of interesting things going to be said, no doubt about that. We'll start with you on this one, eh, Terry? Uh, what was your favourite part of that game yesterday? <laughs> The final whistle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I was what I, I I'm surprised I didn't fold me couch in half with my ass cheeks. I was that tense watching it. <laughs> oh, we we we've we've you know what can you say? We've massively got away with one, haven't we? Like it from our own point of view, you look at that and go, well, maybe that's a bit of a rebate from all the stupid VAR decisions we were getting last season. You know, like penalties that were incorrectly awarded and they had to apologise for after like a Brighton away and you know at home with Tottenham where Deli Alli and balls in the box and they're looking at it for five minutes and they still don't give it I know that doesn't really make Liverpool feel any better because they were involved in those games but from our point of view we've got two massive slices of luck um, in the Pickford decision at the beginning which I'm sure we'll go over in a minute and the of the, the goal in the last you know seconds as well being really let off by the two of those, you know, VAR decisions. But yeah, it's it's a point. Um take the take the teams out of it, put them both in, in blank kits and you'd think, well, it's a point. We haven't really played that well in long spells. You know, key players haven't played well in you know like Alan and and Gomez, you know, didn't play well. Um didn't really see a lot from Richarlison until we did see a lot from him. Um and we've still got a point off of Liverpool team who came out you know, on fire, looking to put it, you know, correct their previous performance against Aston Villa. So it's a good point. I mean, I'd like to win. I think, you know, <laughs> we're going to win eventually one day. But if it, this wasn't a derby, if this was this was Man City a couple of years ago when they set the record and we'd have got a point like that, I'd have, got, I'd have come away going very good points against a very good team. So we've got to look at it like that. And we can yeah, move on. I think it is literally because we're just that desperate for us to actually win a derby. It's like, that's the only reason we're coming away disappointed. Yeah, I mean, the the the, the derby like winless streak's gone on for Youngs, but that the problem, the reason it's gone on for that long is we never beat Liverpool when they were like shit, like, and we weren't like we went we were slightly less shit. Now they're the best team potentially in the world, so it's not because we can't beat this really good version of Liverpool that it's gone on so long. It's because we asked about and couldn't beat them. In 2012, yeah, when Rogers or Dagley was in charge. Yeah, so you can, you know, everyone looks at it in the sense of a 10 year period. If you just look at it in the sense of like a one, two year period, this is uh, the best Liverpool I've possibly ever been. Like, certainly the best they've been in my lifetime. You know, they absolutely romped the league last year and they came out on fire yesterday. So, you know, we we showed good character, didn't show good football. We've um, you know we've had two massive slices of luck, and you know you take the point. We're still top, still undefeated, and just go and make it make it count it against um, Southampton next game. It's a good point. Next game. That's going to be an interesting game. They had a very uh, interesting draw as well yesterday, of course, to the all against Chelsea. Uh, mm. Very interesting stuff. But what we'll do is hey, we'll go we'll just go in chronological order. We'll just go. Right the way back to the start of that roller coaster yesterday, and of course Liverpool score after two minutes. And I mean, I was just like, "Now oh, here we go." Uh, oh, what was going through your head when we gave away an early goal? Well, what what do you think? I was thinking when we gave away an early goal after two, about two minutes and giving the ball away in our own half, I was fuming. That's why. Jesus Christ, early on in the game, first 15 minutes, nothing cheap, nothing easy. Get up the pitch, get a feel of the game. Seamus Coleman just gets done. And then just put, put the, Robertson puts a good ball in the man is on the end of it, I think. Really disappointed to concede that goal. But from that moment on, I didn't think we would, we would get anything from the game. But we obviously did. And I'm not going to complain about the results at all. I think 13 points from five games, an unreal return, especially when you consider we played Tottenham and Liverpool, two teams I think will be in the top three this season. And so, overall, I think we've got to be really pleased with how we're playing. I think we we got lucky, but I think especially that early moment of the game, that game could have gone a completely different way. And I think 
everything of yesteryear from that moment. Um, I think I think they find it very difficult to get back in the game at all. Never mind get a draw. Absolutely, I think it's worth noting that Liverpool had a fair few chances right after that as well. It looked as if we were going to completely cave in, and that included the chance which led to Virgil Van Dijk getting injured by Jordan Pickford, which was again in this period of sustained pressure from Liverpool where they get in behind our defence again and of course this happens. What was your take on the Basil van Dijk Pickford incident, Terry? Oh, I think Pickford should go and put the lottery on um, because the, how he has stayed on the pitch after that. When, when you see it like live, it, yeah, it doesn't look as bad as it actually is but then when they show that reversed angle from the Gladys Street, and you see that he's like absolutely flew into him. He's as well, Annie. Just think, are you fucking serious? Like, it's, you know, we've just conceded an early goal. Liverpool have come out flying and we're, you know, giving away scrappy we're free kicks. We're bit, we were very much on the ropes at that stage. Yeah, we're a bit, bit shell shocked, you know, because they've come out, you know, amazing. And we're like, on, on you know, rocking on our heels. All you need to do. He's just get a grip of things and just calm things down and don't, you know, as Owen said, don't give away anything cheap. And it's just like, oh, mate, it, I, I, it's questionable whether it was even offside. I mean, if that's the rule, that's the rule. But I looked at it and I always, I always try and look at any VAR referee decision going, what would it be like if it went the other way? And I'd have been going nuts that that was ruled offside if it was us attacking them. Yeah, it was very, I'd very certainly, I'd have certainly been pissed off if, you know, we should have had a sending off on a penalty and it wasn't given, especially when you've got a video replay which shows it clear as day. I, you know what I mean? We're an Everton channel, but you've got to be honest, haven't you? It's like, I don't know. We, we've got away with that massively because, all right, the injury is the injury. Like, he's been injured. He's, he's picked up, he's got injured in the incident, and injuries happen in games. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm glad he went off for this match, but I hope he doesn't get injured any further because that's just. Because imagine, you know, imagine someone, one of the, imagine their keeper did that to our best player, like James Rodriguez, you'd be absolutely spitting ass, wouldn't you, if you absolutely. lost him for a season. So, you know, it benefited us that he went off for that game, but you don't want to see him off for any any longer than that. But even if he wasn't injured, like, what are you doing, Pickford? You, we should be 10 men, we should be down to 10 men. And let's be honest, likely to concede another. We should be two, you know, five minutes in, two goals down and down to 10 men. Because our keeper hasn't got two brain cells. I just well, couldn't I believe that's, we got... a good, that's a good point about the not, not having two brain cells. Because I don't actually think that this was a malicious challenge from Pickford. I just think he was off the pace. Van Dijk got the ball before him. And he's gone through him trying to... Because he's panicked. And he's just stupid. He just makes the worst decisions of any keeper I've ever seen. Apart from maybe Kepa. But he's getting there now. How many games has it been now? Like So we'll come on to his other you know issues later later on. But... Uh, we were massively let off for him to not to concede the penalty and not to be sent off because you know what you know if that was the other way around you know if their keeper came out and flew into one of our players like that and we got nothing for it and I'd just I'd be going berserk so I've I have got you know I've got to hold my hands up and just go you know what we got away with it there like everyone throws up and land, you know like oh well this you know previous derbies like yeah but it doesn't mean that you can't ex- you know you don't you can still admit shouldn't have really had that no it was it was harsh but. You know, I think there's, there's a lot of Liverpool fans who are admittedly, like, eaved off by what happened yesterday and, like, this incident with Van Dijk and Nick the Buck. Right before the game, you were sure putting up pictures of Dave Kai, like, kicking, kicking Phil Neville and stuff like that. So, it's just, you know, it's one of them. It's just... It's horrible. It not- it's horrible for Van Dijk, I think, but in, in it terms was- of... The fans, like, you know, when you're putting up pictures of Gerrard smacking Gary Naismith and stuff like that before the game, putting right into these mongrels and stuff like that, it's, a, it's one of them. It was a naughty, for me, it was a naughty tackle, but think? It, it was poor goalkeeping initially, but then I must admit, I'd rather him did what he did and take Van Dyke out than him hesitate. Out of the challenge. And then concede the goal. I, it was. He wasn't malicious. He was. It was just poor goalkeeping, and he tried to atone for it by taking everything else. It was just bad goalkeeping initially. I, I, I don't. I don't want to wish any player injured, but sometimes you've just got to do what you've got to do to not concede the goal. It was a bad tackle. He should have seen red, but 
I, I, I'm not like I don't think it was malicious. I just think it was bad goalkeeping that he had home for, and it was unfortunate that Van Dijk got injured. Well, I think yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. So, so, see, I I don't necessarily agree with that. If if this you know had gone the way it probably should have, I'd rather him concede the second goal than get sent off because you can come back from two 0 down. You can't come back from two 0 down with ten men. So he, you know he's made the mistake, and. He then goes on and really should have got himself sent off. And it's just like, what? How many times is he going to do this? Well, it wasn't even the last time this game was it. Let's be you honest. Know, this is this is what I find absolutely hilariously ironic is that Liverpool fans who are obviously upset about the Van Dyke injury are going, Pickford should be banned for as long as Van Dyke's injured. I'm thinking that would be the biggest blessing in disguise for Everton. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you. Sorry, go on. I was just saying, I our fans were saying that when Son injured Gomez, it just doesn't work like that. You don't get injured. You don't get banned for as long as someone's injured. It, it's just it, the na- nasty tackles. But come on, let's be realistic here. Yeah, I mean, with, with with the Son injury, the way I look at that is, you, you saw it after Gomez had caught him in the face, don't you? Like he went out to do him and pro- and it did him more than he probably meant to do. So that was a malicious tackle. I don't think Pickford was malicious. He's just stupid. Like, yeah, he's, he's, a very, he's, a he's a very a cool, he's, a, he's a clum, he's a clumsy player at the best times. He's he's absolutely stupid. Like, why would you do that in your own box? He's just he's just been massively let off by the VAR, and not for the first time. I mean, I, you know, James, you were saying before about like you know the dead kite thing and all that. Going, you could pick out fans on every team who were like that. I don't want to go down like a rabbit hole like that because you every time. Well, they're putting pictures of that, but then we're putting pictures of that. It's just like, just, I, I just want to focus on the players in the game. So it's it's not mm. right. Like, it, 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 if if he comes out today and says, um, yeah, he's only going to be out for a week, you know, he just charged it badly, then you could sort of go, well, okay, then, you know, he's, you know, it's, it's what goes around comes around. You know, like, you know, we, we've had some bad stuff in the past, but you know if if he comes out and he goes, yeah, I've got like a nine month injury, my season's over, you go, fucking hell, like that's that's too much. That's like, you, you can understand them being upset by that. Because as I say, imagine someone did Calvert Lewin or, mm. or or Rodriguez now, like that. I always, I draw the line at injuries and like that going, you, you're getting up head fans everywhere. And I just, yeah. yeah, I don't think you should judge people based on that because last night, social media was horrendous. It was just, I've never, I've never seen it. Fans from all sides, like from all sides. So I, I, I just think you know what, people turn into like something they're not. Where on these games, it turns into like angry teenagers, all you know, trying their best to upset each other. But yeah. anyway, I've, I've gone off on one there. Let's get back to the game. On that note of the sendings off, what was what about the Charlesons sending off? But I personally think this one was more of a red card than the Pickford one. Uh, no complaints with that. That was definitely a red card. I think he he didn't need the whistle. I think he just tried to take the man out to sort of stop the counter attack. But it was a nasty tackle. It was a stupid tackle. He's out for three games now, and yeah. oh, it's ridiculous. But yeah, it was no complaints with that. Yeah, I think yeah. it was one of them. I, th- I don't think Richarlison was fit yesterday. Personally, I thought he didn't play the same kind of game that we used to see. He wasn't up and down. But, I mean, he did he did have good moments, but he wasn't same speed that we used to see them at and I think if he was probably at the right speed he probably doesn't end up going into that challenge late and as dangerous as he does yeah no. I mean yeah uh, you can say a lot of things about Richarlison you can say like you know he's moody or he like play acts and you know he's dramatic and all that but you can't say he's never done anyone has he it's a it's ridiculous ridiculous uh, tackle I've seen, I've seen a lot of people saying Richarlison that isn't that kind of player and he's the type of player who will go into it in just from one seriously oh, it's like, or is that, is, that more, is that more just cop out file in the heat of the moment it, it's, that's just angry Ed fans like I I, I honestly um, wouldn't put it past myself being the same in the same scenario if I'd have had two players get injured like in the same game but um, no he's, he's, he's got form for a few things he's got form for like you know Rolling round when he hasn't even been given that, a foul. That annoys me more, if I'm being honest. That yeah. rolling, Jesus. I'd Christ. rather him, I'd rather him dive than than roll round when he hasn't got the decision. Just get it back up if you haven't got it. But 
But like he has got form for that. He's got form for being a little bit moody, but he hasn't got form for snapping people and injuring people. Don't be ridiculous. Like he he he's, he come out and apologised, and then someone replied to him, didn't he? And said, well, because he said in the apology, I didn't mean to hurt someone. And then someone replied to that with a picture of him showing studs, going, well, you're showing studs, so you do mean to hurt someone. Then he replies with, um, you know, him pulling, once he's the contact's been made, him pulling his studs away, which is a bit stupid because it still doesn't mean he hadn't shown his studs, but I think he's trying to, like, defend himself, saying, no, no, I didn't try and hurt him. It was reckless, but it wasn't, like, you know, malicious. Yeah. And then everyone's, everyone's took it to me and, like, he was laughing about it, like, no. He, he wasn't clearly like he's not going to do a big written apology about something then five minutes later go ah look at that I mm. just think he's been misunderstood and because everyone's still you know going berserk which you know whatever yeah, there's Liverpool fans going like, like he's not, he shouldn't be allowed to leave Anfield or to sit a body bag and sort of stuff like that yeah whatever like but you know I, I, that's one thing I'll say Pickford's got away with it. Richarlison's held his hands up and said, listen, I should have been sent off. I was, you know, it was a stupid tackle. I didn't mean to hurt him. I just meant to, like, it was it was stupid and reckless. It wasn't malicious. That's what his, you know, point is, whether people agree with that or not. I don't think you could turn around and say, look, he was laughing about it. Your apology means nothing. He's going, no, I'd, come on. He's not good. Why would you bother writing a big apology and then five minutes later start laughing about it? Of course he's not. But yeah, he, he rightfully, you know, he rightfully goes. He's, it's stupid. The whistle's already gone. And he's just, as as Owen said, he's tried to stop the counter attack, and it's just blew up in his face badly. Yeah, it's in the best days for him. But something that I, I must admit did did make me laugh though Saturday night was the Gerard era on Twitter saying that Everton are the most dirty, scummiest team in in the Premier League. Well, good mate, I'm, that's exactly where I want Everton to be. If we're, if we're the nicest team in the league, I don't want to know us. I was not saying <laughs> that, that means we're not playing football the right way. Well, do you know what? Maybe we did play the right way yesterday. We'd have got B5 nil. So, yeah. Exactly. Take that. That's what Liverpool fans want you to play the right way because that means they'll usually win. Oh, they, they did the same. Letico beat them and when Burnley, I think, got a draw against them and Arsenal beat them a few times. If you don't, you don't rush forward against them and let them win, they have an issue, which is fair enough because everyone wants to win. But. That, you want you to play into the hands, and if you don't, you don't. You behave, you didn't say you're like a dirty team or anti football or all that. If I can live with Salah and Mane rolling around like they've been shot, I'm sure they can live with teams defending deep. There you go, yeah, fair enough. Uh, moving on, anyway, of course, we equalise through Michael Keane the first time, a brilliant as a goal from a set piece again, another goal from the Everton set piece. So, you know, can't complain about the are set pieces this season. No, totally different, isn't it? But it's it's one of them. It's it's you know, we've had a lot of luck going our favour this game and the fact Van Dyke went off, it's no coincidence that one you know, with it out him on the pitch we scored two headers. Like he's he, you know, we made the most of their weakening of aerial, you know, presence and defence. So they got the and also let's be honest, that first goal, the keen goal, is a gift from that keeper. Adrian yeah. is shocking, isn't he? Like he's absolutely pony. I know our keeper's bad, but it doesn't mean that he's he's not as well. And I don't well, the the least like imagine the drop off like with him and Allison and to him. Like no wonder they all can't stand him because he's costing them goals and goals every time he's playing, isn't he? I'm going to say even Joel Robles is better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, I can agree with that. But yeah, yeah he's, he's still better. Shell shocked, shell shocked after the first goal from them, and we get away with one with Pickford. Then they're a little bit shell shocked when Van Dyke goes off. I felt like they sort of didn't suddenly we didn't get back on top per se, but they definitely you know eased off a little bit. They went a bit within themselves, and that's when we got our equaliser. Um, was it one one at half time? I think it was. Yeah. 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 It was one one at half time. And then the game sort of settled into like a sort of malaise, didn't it, in the second half? Like, wasn't really going either way. You know, you know, you know some players yeah. were having better, you know, good games. Like the Henderson and Thiago were both unreal for them, I've got to be honest. But then you look at like, you know, James Rodriguez started coming into the game more. I didn't think he had much to say in the first half, but he started to get um, on top of things a little bit more in the yeah, second he played, half. He played that king and Nifadina and Carl had a good chance. Yeah, we had the header from Richarlison, which... I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, I stopped running. Jesus. I know, it's just that we that's two times we've hit the post in the last two games, like against Liverpool. Like just one of them go in for fuck's sake and we've gone ahead and then obviously there's the the um one where the what Owen just said then when he pings it across and, and Calvert Lewin's just a little bit behind it and can't make it. You know, if you fashion ourselves a few good chances and then you know they score from a stupid mistake from Yeri Mina. But well, it was a stupid mistake. I, th- I think what I noticed, especially at the start of the second half, was there were a lot of like direct balls going from one end to the other, and no one really could get into the game. No one really took control of it. I thought Henderson and Thiago settled it down for a bit for them, but there was no one from our team. And I'm not going to mention Andre Gomez because what's the point to just get pelters if I do mention him? But no one from our team was similarly sort of controlling the game like they were. After that, I think especially they scored and then. Obviously, Dom scored and there was a few more chances, but I think I think as much as we say we were lucky in that game, there were opportunities for us to take the lead and sort of forge a different path yeah, to that that's game. A good point. That one all, I think we spent the opportunity to win the game. I think once we went two on down, I didn't fancy us to win, but I thought mm. we'd still have a chance of getting back in the game, which we did. And let's talk about that Dominic Calvert Lewin goal. Yeah, I mean, what a, head, what a crowd. Uh, the 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 goals we conceded were entirely of our own making. You know, we didn't track Mane on his run, and we absolutely you know backheeled it onto a plate for um for Salah to score his. But you look at our goals and you go, yeah, set piece, fair enough. But then that you know the the goal of the game was the Dominic Calvert Lewin one. Jürgen Klopp said, didn't he? As soon as um Dean got the ball and stood it up to the back post, the the Everton bench just just all shouted and stood up when it was hanging in the air because they knew here we go. Um, Calvert Lewin, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo style leap into the air, puts it across goal, and just think, you know what? He scored some scruffy ass goals this season, but that was oh, that was like that was that was um I was gonna say it was a of the season. Tim, Tim Cale yeah. scored goals like that like every week. And I, I knew I knew it was going in as soon as Luca Dean put the cross in and what what a footballer Luca Dean is by the way. Yeah, he, he, I don't, I don't, he was excellent. I, I, he is someone I think if we look at this season the way we've gone so far I, I think he's the one player who's been literally top notch in every game and gone under the radar for how good he's been I think what a signer and what a footballer yeah. he is he's an absolute joy to watch defensively as well he won the most aerial yeah. duels yesterday and he's been he's played centre back in the in the league cup and like he's just absolutely uh, I mean I love Luca Dean he's possibly my favourite player he's just so good He's a model professional as well. You can put him anywhere and he'll do a job. Yeah, he, that's he, why, he, I think that's why after Coleman's injury, he wears the armband now. Yeah. yeah. For me, yeah, for me, he may be not a captain in name, but he, he's a captain in sort of attitude and application. On, he, he's, a pro, he's a proper player. That's one of those... Um, 17, sorry, go 17 million quid, by the way. Tremendous. One of those players who you just know, you know, when opposition managers do their analysis of Everton before we play them, he'll mm. be one of the names on the whiteboard, won't he? Like, you know, there'll be Hamas Rodriguez, there'll be, there'll be um, Dominic Carvalho and there'll be Luca Dean. You'll be like, going, here, you need to stop each one of these if you're going to, if we're going to win this game. And he, he is just great, Luca Dean. Mm. Well, but, um, of course, we'll get to the very end of the game now, of course, after the, the Charleston send off. It was a nearly finish and we thought it was another one of them when they scored another late goal from another error from Pickford and you know it was it looked like it was gonna be one of them again where we all have to just go in the street into our caves for months on end and thankfully it wasn't to be because of a very controversial VAR decision. Guys, what are your stances on the VAR decision? I've I've watched I think now 27 replays of this incident and I haven't yet to see any offsides but I'm not but do I care now? No, you can't complain obviously it's worked out in our favour but I didn't see an offside there either I was looking no. at it. I was I was getting ready to do my match reaction because I was just like absolutely infuriated and I was just like I felt like head button the walls after seeing that go in and I thought I've had enough of this I'm thinking I've had enough of this Get the offside and blow the big and whistle so I can see match reaction and don't have a few pints. And then I look and I'm like, yeah, it's not offside, so swear it off, just get it done, over and done with. And then you disallow it. 
and I'm yeah. just absolutely bewildered. I mean, the happiest I, kind of bewildered, but bewildered nonetheless. I I celebrated that more than any of our two goals. No, absolutely. That's, yes. that's how much I remember. It was nonsense, and it, it it was a goal because I am yet to see any offside. But just the relief that, but I think we, we really unf- we, we got lucky for once. Yeah, it, it was that kind of thing. Saying, yeah, we deserve a bit of um a bit of luck here because of how unlucky we've been in so many big games in the past. But yeah, Especially and then we get the free- and then we get the free kick in the last minute and at that point yeah, of the let's go and win it now. I was thinking if we score this now, I'm getting the plastic Premier League trophies out because there's no way on earth we've deserved to win this game. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I like when the Charleston goes off, they've got five minutes uh, with you know what an extra man, and that's where that Tiago you can really see where he's going to help them. Like he, he looked really good against Chelsea when it was ten men. And he looked really good against us for five minutes when it was 10 men. And what did teams with 10 men do? They sit low and compact. So that's why he's been brought in because he's going to be the player who play, you know, unlocks those, you know, the Burnleys of the, of the Premier League and what have you. And the te- <laughs> sorry, Owen. The teams, who, uh, the teams who sit in and, like, you know, build the wall around their goal, that's what he's for. And you can see already, like, the pass um, before the goal, it was a two. I think it's Tamane. But he. Uh, it, it's a great pass and then you know he rolls it back to sit to Henderson and Henderson it's the meekest mildest you know P-roller shot ever and somehow Jordan Pickford uh, conspires to put, that, put it in his net it's like that should be a Jordan Pickford on goal that's how bad that is and I just think you know what You've got to he, needs, again. he needs dropping that, week. He's, that should have been the second time what? go on I am actually begging for them to do some sort of retrospective action on Pickford because it could be a blessing in disguise. Honestly, honestly, just just drop them next game because that, you know, but for, you know, the football and God smiling on us and ruling that out for an offside, that frankly, I can't see. If, it is, if the new letter of the law says, oh, yeah, that tiny bit of his, you know, sleeve is ahead of me in his boot, then okay, it's still nonsense isn't it but all right that's the lesser of the law but for me that's like he's he's conceded the goal in the 95th minute again it's like i said before the game if he keeps doing this in any games never mind derbies he needs to be dropped we should be sitting here now having lost 3-2 to a last minute winner again and it was pickford's fault how yeah. many times does he need to do this? He, the pick for the the one with the Rigi, where we were we were actually closer to Liverpool in that game than we were in this one. He cost us. He, he practically derailed our season that year because we went on a bad run after that. Mm. And this, he, he might have done it this time. Like imagine the imagine the negative impact. I mean, we might have weathered it better with like better players and a better manager this time. But imagine the negative impact if we'd have lost that game in that fashion because that absolute moron. Can't, can't, you know, he, oh yeah, he, he does a really good save against um, a corner header from Joel Matip. It's like, yeah, but that means nothing if he's going to let goals in like that. He cancels out any good saves he makes by doing that. So for me, next game, drop him for Olsen. And that Olsen cannot be worse than him. And if he is, give him a chance to be worse because Pickford is absolutely Pickford's out, He's out of chances now. He's running out of chances. <laughs> and one player we hey, haven't touched on. Sorry. Go yeah, I was going to say, Ted, in his current form, you're not worse than him. I know, he's absolutely diabolical. And you know who else I'd, I'd probably drop as well, and I've been a fan of his? I'd drop Mina, because we've had quite a few, you know, we've had a lot more good results this well, season. Yeah. Not more good results this season, but we've had quite a lot of defensive errors in, in uh, cross games, and we keep getting away with it because we're scoring a lot of goals. But every mistake, if you look at our defensive mistakes this season, have been either Pickford or Mina. And Ben Godfrey came on and threw a blanket over him, Sadio Mane. He was better at right back than Coleman was. So I, yeah. I personally, if if Kenny is um, fit for the next game, because I don't think Coleman's going to be, I'd play Kenny right back and I'd put Godfrey at him centre back. Well, Carlo said that Kenny will be fit for that game, so that'd be good to see. Maybe if we can see Godfrey in his natural position and see what he can bring to the table. He was really good, Godfrey, when he came on, stood up to the challenge. I, I would honestly, I'd bring Olsen and I'd bring Godfrey in next game and just go and just, just say to them, sorry lads, 
we're still you know, we've got a lot of good results. But we've got very high standards to maintain and use too. I've been making mistakes. Oh, so yeah. Uh, we should be. I said it before. We should be sitting here having lost another derby in the last second because of our goalkeeper. That would have been three goals that were our own fault to concede. And Pickford, I'm, I'm sorry, mate. You've got it. You should have. Had, you either should have been sent off in the fifth minute and had us two 0 down. Or you should have conceded the 95th minute um, winner. So either whichever way, one, either way, you've got off the hook there. Whichever one makes you feel better, that, that's the reason you're getting drops, mate. I mean, I can't see it, but he needs he needs dropping off he's a cliff. He's off his backside, don't he? Yeah. Another thing on drop, maybe dropping Mina for the Southampton game is they played two forward to a very quick and mobile. There you have it, guys. For once, Lady Luck has shined on Everton on Merseyside Derby Day. Everton come away with that's say a slightly undeserved point uh, after a few controversial decisions actually went in our favour but I'm sure we won't be complaining so enjoy the rest of your weekend and of course it's on to Southampton next so Everton without Richarlison of course but we've got a few players to fill in there and we go again so anyway guys let us know your opinions on the Merseyside derby and the, the two all draw let us know your opinions on all the big talking points drop us a comment below Give this video a like and subscribe for more great content. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching all the Toffee Blues. Oh, no,